What's going on, cat gang? Harrison here with two cats, and I i swear I'm in here somewhere. There we go. I had to break free of that mob of people. It is a long past time that I made a video about this game. Woman Tower Defense, or I guess now it's been renamed to Arena Tower Defense. Personally, I like the old name. So I'm going to be going over the basic layout of this game, the UI, some of the things I like and don't like about it, and all that good stuff. I really appreciate this matchmaking system that involves you basically sitting at a table. Even though it's really similar to the elevator system that TDS has and the fact that you can't pick who you want to play with And I usually have a mob of people chasing me around So whoever sits down first gets in my game, uh, which is annoying because sometimes I want to play with certain people But other than that, I really like this matchmaking system. I'll get into that in a second Let me go downstairs to see what's going on down here. Okay, cool This is where they moved the cafe to that's perfect because I was wanting some coffee. Let me grab a coffee Oh, yeah, I gotta drink up. Oh, it's so realistic if you haven't played arena tower defense yet then you might not know that you can either do four player games or six player games oh that's the difference here there are no six player tables downstairs let's go ahead and sit down at this table and i can show you how the uh matchmaking system works it's kind of hard to tell right now you see the people all standing on the table and the fire that's in the chairs that prevents people from joining before i have the game set up first thing i want you to note is that you can choose any map that you want right here i love this option it really saves you the headache of having to wait for your favorite map to show up. So you can choose any of the maps from these categories. We have easy, medium, hard, and expert. I'll choose one right in the middle to make sure I don't die during this vid. Now I can choose which game mode I want to play, and each one is going to have a different criteria. We got easy, medium, hard, apocalypse, and master. I'm not going to go through what all the differences are, but you can see by just holding my mouse over them, it'll tell me that they have uh, different modifiers, different wavelengths, different base health, and master is actually a solo challenge, which I think is really neat. So I'm going to choose hard because it does give us a full 80 waves, but we're still able to sell our towers, which is one of the differences between hard and apocalypse. Now the last option you have to pick here is the mutations you want to go in with. By default it's set to standard, but you can also choose half cash, strong bosses. Oh, what? Where? Oh, this is a new one. All enemies are completely invisible and hidden. And who turned off the lights? It looks like it's going to be in the dark. I'm just going to choose standard for now. And once you have all of this set up, you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. You're going to see that the fire disappears from the chairs and people are able to sit down. Ooh, uh, this is a much shorter path than I was expecting. I'm actually not going to place a tower here at first because I want to save up for Maya, which is my hero here. So the game has a pretty cool category of towers that I believe are called heroes and they have special abilities. I haven't looked at all of them, but the one I've been using so far is Maya. She uses a sniper with infinite range and she also gives money as well as making your tower upgrades cheaper after she gets to a certain level. Yeah, you heard that right. She is both a damage tower and a Nico DJ. <laughs> One of the unique aspects of the hero towers is that they upgrade on their own with each wave. So you do have the option to invest money into them, but if you don't, if you just place them and then let them do their thing, they will upgrade. Since she has max range, I like to put her all the way on the edge. Now you'll see her turn and just shoot everybody. Yeah, get him, Maya. No survivors. So you see how she was just all sparkly? That means she upgraded. So she went up to level three already. Yeah, I just placed her and I haven't spent any money on her. She's already level three. Another one of her unique abilities is the fact that her shots will ricochet between enemies. So if you have big hordes, which this game has lots of hordes rushing in, she can handle those really well. Just because her bullets will hit multiple bad guys. Oh, nice. What tower is this? If you've never played before, I'm pretty sure the first tower you start with is the sergeant. This is a real really good starting tower, especially on the easiest mode. I basically just placed one down and upgraded it to level five, and it killed pretty much everything really quickly. When I tried to do that on uh, one of the harder difficulties, I didn't make it quite as far, so then I just placed down two or three of them, and it was fine. If you're using these guys, I recommend upgrading one all the way to level five before placing another one. You really don't need a lot of them at a low level because of how powerful they get with each upgrade. All right, here is the Ruby Queen. She's another hero, just like Maya. I don't have her yet, so I can't really say anything about her. I haven't played with this guy. This is the uh, artillerist. Is that a word? I really like the magician. So what I would recommend here is that if you guys are starting to play the game, get the magician and use her instead of the sergeant because she only costs like 50 more dollars to place and she does way more damage. And just like with the sergeant, you want to upgrade her to level five uh, before you place another one. Nice. This person has Maya too. I'm actually not going to place any of these low level towers that I have here. I use these just 
just in case I'm playing with people that don't really know what they're doing. I need to place some towers down early. Right now, I'm just saving up some duh monies. All right, this is actually the first time that I've used this alien tower here. She is support, so I'm gonna place her down near these people, and I'm pretty sure she just splashes them with her magical potion. Oh, yeah, she just hit that guy with some potions. See how he's got bubbles coming off of him? Now she hit this girl. Okay, I see why they changed it from woman tower defense. It's because there's not just women in this game. This guy could be a woman. Just slap a wig on him. Bruh. There she goes. She just hit this guy with some potion. I don't know about you, man, but I get pretty mad if some aliens just start throwing liquid in my face. Let me place another one of those near my Maya. Your sole mission on this planet, alien, is to stop staring off into the distance and splash a potion on the most powerful tower in the game. All right, Maya is getting surrounded by aliens. She's going to be abducted real soon. Okay, I see here. You have to upgrade the alien to level one to get it to throw the stimulating potion on your tower. It gives them extra damage and the ability to kill lead zombies. Another thing I want to point out is that the waves move super fast in this game. What I've noticed is that each game lasts about 20 to 25 minutes, which is typical for tower defense sim as well. And what's really different is that you have like a crazy number of waves, like 60 or 80. So even though you have to go through a whole bunch of waves, they go by pretty quickly. One of the things that is really unique about this game compared to pretty much any other tower defense game I've played is that you will just get giant swarms of enemies all coming in at the same time. And they're not like super high health enemies, so we can kill them pretty easily. But it just looks cool for the game. You see how many are coming in right here? Look at that. They get melted, but it does point out how the uh, creators of this game take the wave structure really seriously. So these dudes are beefy void. They have a lot of health compared to the other enemies. We have a good team here, so we're taking everything down pretty quickly. All right, now I'm gonna place this uh, red tower here. This is the gunner. I actually have only used this in one game before. And when you get it up to level 5, it gets a P90 and it just absolutely shreds. Another thing I wanted to point out in this video is the fact that all of the maps I've played on so far are just really simple base plates like this. And it's something new and different from the other tower defense games I've seen on Roblox. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. The first time I saw it, I was like, how is this even a tower defense game map? But you know, uh, like the maps in TDS are like landscape and they have mountains and they're really big and they're really long. These maps are not like that. They're very short. They're very simple. They're very confined, which is a nice change of pace. Look, I've just been sitting here talking to you guys. We're already on wave 56. And that's one thing I like about the game is that I can just kind of zone out and let my towers do all the work. I don't have to constantly be watching to um, upgrade stuff or use commander call to arms. At the same time, the game can get pretty repetitive or overly simplistic to the point where I don't really care what's happening. Like, I'm not invested in the gameplay, so I don't really care to watch the game. So that might be something that the arena tower defense devs change as they uh, develop the game and evolve it. Uh oh, this guy is super meaty. Let me upgrade this gunner to uh, the P90. Now watch him just shred. So if you have the option to get the gunner tower, I highly recommend it. Dang, gunner, chill. Leave some for the rest of the players. All right, now as far as the tower leveling system, there are six levels for every tower, except for the heroes. I'm pretty sure the heroes go up to uh, 15. But what I want to show you here is that I'm going to upgrade this gunner to level five right now. And then besides just looking really cool, he actually gets an option for a level six upgrade, which is super expensive. Now you can only upgrade one tower of each type to level six per game. I can show you real quick how that works with the Magician. You see how they're both at level five? They have all five green bars right here. Well, for $42,000, I can upgrade one to have the special ability at level six. All right, so I'm gonna do it for this one. So it says max upgrade on the one on the left now, and the one on the right also says max upgrade, just because I upgraded the one on the left. So that's a pretty unique feature of the uh, towers in this game. Oh, cool. This tower is named Swords Woman. Even though they changed the name from Woman Tower Defense, I think they still need to have all the towers be women, or at least give us a female skin for everyone. All right, we are on the final wave. We have one super strong boss that we have to destroy. This guy had 235,000 health. That's more than the Fallen King. Okay. 
What in the world? I have no idea what that was. That, that might have been some hero's special ability. Oh, airstrike. Thanks. Oh, okay. So it was something. I'm still learning the game. I'm not familiar with every uh, tower and every ability they have. All right. And that is uh, a victory royale. Victory royale. On the hard game mode. And you can see here that it only took 22 minutes. So really not that much time at all. Now, this is one of the coolest things about this game. When your match is finished, you do not automatically teleport back to the lobby. You actually have the option to go endless. I haven't ever done this before, so let me click on it and then see what happens. Waves will go on forever until you lose. Tower limits will be ignored and zombies will only get stronger and faster from here. Wow, this is a really cool option to let people keep playing with their friends if they're having a good time. Yo, I totally forgot to upgrade any of my aliens to level 5. Maya's like, ow, stop throwing that stuff in my eyes. Ow, I can't see what I'm shooting. And then she starts shooting her. Oh, and then the whole game blows up. Yo, I made it to wave 100. I'm fighting this Amy Thesis Void Lord with 1 million health. Who's this guy think he is? The Frost Spirit? Yo, he just spawned in a bunch of enemies like crazy. All right, I'm not going to lie. This is pretty cool. Oh, interesting. I'm not actually getting any money for damaging this guy. I mean, girl. Obviously, as a girl. I'm so sorry, man. Please forgive me. Dude, this is freaking epic. I had no idea any of this happened. Yes, we did it. I even got a badge for killing her. But that's not the end. We can go forever. I'm actually going to back out now and go back to the lobby so I can show you guys the rest of the towers and finish talking about the game. All right, so now that you've seen how matchmaking works and what an actual game looks like, I'm going to show you some of the user interfaces and the towers. So here is the shop. You can see that there's a variety of towers to choose from. Oh, they're called guardians, not heroes. That's right. So you've got two different currencies that you can use to buy towers you can either use coins which are right here and you can actually use robux <laughs> which may or may not be what i did to get maya but for the regular towers you can only use xp which cannot be bought it has to be earned by playing the game oh nice they just expanded this the last time i was in here the only option was the apprentice maya right here all right now here's the tower ui you can see all the towers i have here and they're all in the order that they show up in my loadout down here it's really simple to equip or unequip towers you just just click on them and it leaves your loadout and then if you want to bring it back in you just click on it again it'll put it right back at the end there's also this button here to randomize your loadout so i click that and it's just going to put whatever towers i have randomly into my loadout another awesome option this game has is for you to create your favorite decks so this is the loadout right here that i really like to use so i'm going to click create on that and it's going to create a permanent loadout for me to choose from now if i randomize everything you can see that my loadout has changed i can also create that deck right here and then i could very easily switch between and entire deck. So that is Woman Defense Simulator. <laughs> I mean arena tower defense. I'm gonna have the link down in the description below. Let me know in the comments what you think about it because so far I've really enjoyed it. All right, now if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button with your forehead, hit the subscribe button with your big toe, and turn on notifications however you can so you don't miss any of my amazing upcoming content. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, be safe, and never forget what I always say. Why can't I get out here?